Hello. Hi. My name's Justin Guile. Um, this is my video for the final project. I'm posting on my Weebly site uh, for Intro to Computer Science with Professor Sandra Rimmitz. Today I will be dissecting the Sony PlayStation 2 and going over a couple of the chips and parts on the motherboard. Uh, I've taken the liberty of taking all the screws out so it won't be too much a waste of your time. Okay, so obviously right here is the disk drive for Sony PlayStation games. Oh, I need my screwdriver. This drive with the laser. Of course, the Sony PlayStation 1 also involved laser discs, but this involved DVDs rather than just compact discs. The fan, which uh, this, this PlayStation is pretty old, um, it's already broken. I would have taken apart my PlayStation 3, except for the fact that. Um, there are the warranty stickers that if you remove them or cut them it will void the warranty and really don't want to void the warranty on my awesome new PlayStation 3 so I'm taking a part of the PlayStation 2 um, which is just as good let's pretend it's 2004 uh, back then this was cutting edge technology actually uh, the Toshiba and Sony motion engine was actually very innovative so, a memory card. PlayStation 1 also involves memory cards. See, it's that kind of stuff that ruined PlayStations. Dust would get. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Dust ruined PlayStation 2's. It ruined this one, I'm guessing. Got it off my friend. Cause, okay, so here we have the motherboard. It's beautiful. Right there's the motion engine. Look at all that dust. See, that's why you gotta keep it clean. I don't know how Sony expects you to keep it clean with the warranty stickers. Can't take it apart. Look at all that. It's disgusting. Who knows how many years of dead skin cells is in here. Okay. So now that we got the motherboard out. Okay, so like I said, this is the motion engine designed by Toshiba and Sony. Unlike the PlayStation 3, IBM wasn't involved, but the the cell broadband engine in the PS3 is like uh, like I said in my report a love child of IBM Toshiba and Sony and it's stronger than most modern day computers and this this was up there with modern day computers in its time um, the main CPU is right here this is the graphics processor with four megabytes of video RAM VRAM um, these two here. These two chips are the RAM. Um, I think it's 32 megabytes of RAM, which for its time again was pretty good. 
Um, the graphics processor is connected to the motion engine by a 2560 megabyte wide bus. Um, I believe I read up somewhere that it was 48 gigabytes a second, which I don't. It was hard to believe, so it's probably wrong. Uh, that's one of the only facts that I was skeptical about. Um, okay. So, in the Emotion Engine, there's a couple of parts. There's a floating point coprocessor. Um, if you read my final paper, like in the CBE, the broadband engine inside the PS3, the, the CBE has eight other processing elements to do, you know, other algorithms and do the grunt of the work. This one, has just the one floating point core processor, but all it does really is it executes small algorithms and math operations while the emotion engine, the main CPU, does a lot of the work. Um, also, inside the emotion engine is a MPEG image decoder. Uh, if you know anything about the PS2, um, it could play DVDs, which was pretty awesome. Like the PS3, how it plays Blu ray, it was a big selling point. Um, Let's see, where is it? Right here is the DVD controller for the the PS2. I don't know if you can see it. Okay. Okay. So the motion engine, the main CPU, actually creates the graphics. Um, it creates 3D images and polygons, um, and it takes that raw 3D data and sends it to the graphics processor and for order, for order, in order for your TV to play the 3D images the graphics processor renders it as a 2D image with textures and such so your TV can read it. Dust. Okay, um, so when the motion engine takes the 3D data and sends it to the graphics processor and the graphics processor uh, the GPU synthesizer renders it 2D. It's called rasterization when it takes that raw 3D data. Um, there's not much else. I really don't know what this does. Uh, no one online seems to know either. Um, I guess it'll stay a mystery. But uh, what this is, um, in my opinion, I think it's just an input input output processor but I know for a fact that this was the exact CPU used in the original PlayStation the PlayStation 1 and the PlayStation 2 is backwards compatible so you can put a PlayStation 1 disc in the PlayStation 2 drive and this would be the CPU that processes the game this is what does the work when you play a PlayStation 1 game this is an exact replica of the processor in the PlayStation 1. Um, this right here, sorry, I haven't been paying attention. Okay, this is the PlayStation 1 processor. This right here is the SPU, the sound processor. Um, this is, again, the exact replica of the PlayStation 1, except for this one is a dual core. It has two of the SPUs from the PlayStation 1. So they took the SPU from the PlayStation 1, just doubled it, and that's the sound processor for the PlayStation 2. Um, uh, so there's not much, much else I can really tell you about the motherboard on the PS2. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm just an intro to computer science, but this to me still blows my mind how advanced technology this is. Like, PlayStation's rival modern computers. Uh, the PlayStation 3 is ten times stronger than today's modern PC. Um, and double the processing power of the Xbox 360. Again, if you read my paper, you would know this. Um, so the Emotion Engine was one of the biggest CPUs that came out of the decade. Um, now it's second to only the Cell Broadband Engine and the PS3. So that's all I can really tell you. Uh, I could show you putting it back together, but that's really no fun. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it.